In macroeconomics, we look at the big picture. We want to be able to judge the overall economic performance of a given economy. We are interested in understanding how the interaction between different economic agents determine the overall economic outcome. A few critical questions you may consider. For example, how could we know whether an economy is doing well or not? Of course, in an economic sense. Why is it crucial for the economy to grow over time? And how could we measure that? Is there a way to quantify economic performance? So it would be easy to make comparisons over time or across different economies. How about the prices of goods and services an economy produces or imports from abroad? It is important to note here that I'm referring to the overall price level or the inflation rate. I am not talking about the price of one product, but rather the price level of all products in general. How about employment and job creation? Why does everyone care about the unemployment rate? You must have heard about the unemployment rate all the time in the news, especially in times of economic crises. The most precious resource any economy possesses is its human capital. That is not only the quantity of labor, but also its quality, determined by education and training. We know that resources are scarce. Therefore, unemployment is such a painful waste to a country's most valuable resource. In macroeconomics, we learn how to measure the unemployment rate and determines its dynamics. What interventions do policymakers need to implement in bad times? From experience, we know that the economy goes through cycles of bad times and good times, a concept known as the business cycle. It is normal to see an economy going somewhat too slow or too fast compared to its potential. We will learn about physical policy and monetary policy instruments and how governments and central banks put these tools into action when needed. In bad times, the unemployment rate would be very high. If the economy is overheated because there's much more demand for products than it can produce, the inflation rate will be too high. What implications does that have to policy making? Generally speaking, authorities should use available policy tools to slow down the economy when it goes too fast or to push it further when it is too slow. A commonly used indicator to measure economic performance is the gross domestic product or GDP. It reflects how much output a given economy produces in a given period, which indicates the size of the economy as well. Output per person or GDP per capita measure the standard of living in a given country. You can divide GDP by the population size to obtain GDP per capita. Looking at this map, which reflects per capita GDP worldwide, the blue colored degree shows how rich or a poor country is. Darker blue reflects higher levels of per capita GDP. And this map shows a rough but not accurate picture of where the rich and poor reside. It would be best if you were careful when using per capita GDP to measure living standards. Let me give you a trivial but helpful example to get this point across. Assume we have a tiny hypothetical economy of 100 citizens. The total income in this economy is 1,000 pounds. Would that give us a good representation of living standards in this economy? Well, we could compare this level of income with other countries, for example. How about the price levels? Aren't they essential to know how much you can buy with a given income level? How about the standard of living within our example country? Would a GDP level equivalent to 1,000 pounds be reflective of how will our 100 citizens live? 
Some could say we need to calculate the per capita GDP in that tiny economy. Dividing 1,000 pounds by 100 citizens will give us 10 pounds on average or per capita income. That sounds easy to calculate. How about if I tell you one citizen receives 900 pounds and the remaining citizens share the 100 pounds left? Do you see how per capita GDP by itself is not enough to reflect the living standards in a given economy? We need to consider the income distribution, not only income level. However, GDP per capita remains an easy indicator to calculate and is the most commonly used uh, despite its pitfalls. We should also note that higher GDP is not bad in itself. Higher GDP levels are good to boost the standard of living, but they are not sufficient. This graph compares GDP per capita in a selected group of countries between 1980 and 2017 Although there is an upward trend in all countries, there is a distinct gap between different groups. The graph shows that some countries are richer than others. Given the caution we gave about using average indicators such as per capita GDP, because these indicators tend to be influenced by extreme values, as in our hypothetical economy example. Similar to the previous graph, this one shows GDP growth in a group of countries. Again, GDP growth is necessary, but might not be sufficient to raise more people out of poverty. Yet a high GDP level is likely to be associated with high incomes. On the other hand, weak GDP growth probably means cutting jobs, earning and spending less, many people will be worse off. Another indicator which you might be familiar with from the news is the inflation rate. Inflation refers to sustained rises in the general price level. In macroeconomics, we would be interested in understanding what drives inflation rate and how to keep inflation under control. Why do we need to keep inflation under control? Several reasons as to why policymakers should and indeed do focus on keeping inflation under control. Inflation erodes purchasing power. Higher prices mean fewer products you can buy with any given income level. The inflation rate could be a sign of how sound economic policies are in a given country as well. The unemployment rate is another crucial macro indicator to follow. How do we define and measure unemployment? For example, to be counted as unemployed, you should be available for work and looking for work, but could not find a job. A closely related point is, what are the critical drivers of employment and job creations? what determines wages in the labor market, and so on. To recap, important macroeconomic indicators include GDP and its growth rate, inflation rate, and the unemployment rate. These topics are all covered in macroeconomics, which studies various economic agents, such as households, firms, and the government, and also agents in other countries. These agents interact through markets, including goods markets, financial markets, and the labor markets.